And so what I think would be um, befitting is to give you an overall analysis of everything that's just happened in the Middle East um, and the cost benefit analysis of that situation. And then, of course, give you uh, what I think is the summary of whether this was a net positive or a net negative, which is, by the way, the only way any serious analyst of the Middle East should approach the subject. The way you shouldn't do it is to define the Middle East and all of the moving pieces. And I can assure you there are many multiple moving pieces in the Middle East. Uh, the way you shouldn't do it is to define those moving pieces through the lens of your hatred for President Trump. Because guess what, folks? The world doesn't revolve around your hatred for President Trump. And the Middle East certainly doesn't revolve around your hatred for President Trump. And you're perfectly entitled to hate President Trump. There's many things about him that are easy to hate. But that's not what the Middle East is about nor what it revolves around. And so if you take a perspective that everything that just unfolded in the Middle East is necessarily bad because President Trump did it, let's call that orange man bad syndrome, then forgive me, but I will say to you that that is an overwhelming not overwhelmingly narcissistic approach to take because the world doesn't revolve around you. The world doesn't revolve around your feelings towards the president. And if a broken clock can be right twice a day, the question is whether this was one of those times, not whether you dislike the president. It's not about you. And for the life of me, people like Michael Moore, people like um, uh, 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 other Hollywood celebrities who... Uh, make this all about their hatred for Trump. And then Michael Moore is an example I mentioned because then what he did is he posted on social media a direct message to the theocrat in Iran, the Ayatollah Khamenei, saying, I've slid into his DMs and I've asked him not to attack us, please. We're begging you. I'll let you know, world, if he replies to me. Who do you think you are? You're going to set Iranian foreign policy by sliding into the DMs of the Ayatollah. And by the way, when Michael Moore did that, he couldn't get, even get his name right. He called him Khomeini, which is the guy that died, who founded the Iranian Republic. The current theocrat's name is Khamenei. And I know uh, Persian, Urdu and Arabic names are difficult for you to pronounce, Michael Moore. Don't act all of a sudden as if you're an expert on the Middle East and you're going to set Middle East and US foreign policy by sliding into the DMs of a theocrat. So these far left activists who make it all about themselves and think that their hatred of Trump is the, le the correct lens through which to view the Middle East. What I'm calling, I'm calling that, I'm calling it overwhelmingly narcissistic American privilege. Because let me tell you something. Your hatred for Trump isn't as important to me as the half a million Syrian lives that General Qasim Soleimani was responsible for supporting the murder of when he backed Assad, kept the supply routes open to, to fund and arm Assad and engage in a near genocide uh, in Syria. What matters to me more are innocent Israeli civilians that Qasim Soleimani targeted via his control, financing and establishment of Hezbollah in Lebanon which is an organization that officially is prescribed in the United Kingdom as a terrorist group. Or even Hamas that he funds and arms, another terrorist group that targets innocent Israeli lives. But the first one, Hezbollah, is a terrorist militia that Soleimani decided once the Syrian uprising initiated, which, don't need to remind you, started off as a secular demand for justice, he decides to take that terrorist militia from Lebanon, give them a break, a holiday from killing Jews and told them to go and start killing civilians in Syria instead. And that's the figure of half a million. The man he backed in Syria decided to gas his own people. That's what concerns me. Let's move to Iraq. In Iraq, another terrorist proxy uh, that he founded, Qatayb Hezbollah, was shooting secular protesters in the head 
in Tah in, in Baghdad Square, Tahrir Square, just a week before this incident, snipering innocent protesters because they had the audacity to challenge the government of Iraq and demand that Iran stop colonizing and interfering in the affairs of their country. Qasim Soleimani's response via his terrorist uh, proxy militia was just to murder them, as he did in Syria before. Why not, folks? It worked for him in Syria. Why wouldn't it work for him in Iraq? If you need to kill half a million people to stop an uprising, you've just had the game plan work out for you in Syria. Why not try the same thing in Iraq? Now, where was Michael Moore's outrage when that was unfolding just a week before? And so let me assure you that what I'm more concerned about are the innocent Arab Muslim lives that have been slaughtered by this man because he wanted to, in Syria, prop up a dictator and in Iraq, colonize Iraq uh, so that it could come under the Iranian sphere of influence, which was only possible, by the way, uh, because at numpty, George Bush decided to invade that country and throw it firmly and squarely into the Ira Iranian sphere of influence. But that's all ancient history now. Let's talk about current affairs. What concerns me more are the lives of those innocent Arab protesters that Qasim Soleimani uh, thinks that the way to deal with them is just by slaughtering them and gassing them. That concerns me more, frankly, oh, privileged left and uh, Western leftists, uh, than your hatred for Trump. Hate Trump all you like, but don't allow your hatred for Trump to trump the concerns of what this man was doing in the Middle East. Iran, as a, as a matter of fact, was, is the world's most prolific state sponsor of terrorism. Now, if you're going to opine on this subject, I think as a bare minimum, what you should be able to do is tell me what exactly is going on in Lebanon and which organisation Iran is backing, um, who heads it, and why it's a terrorist organisation. Likewise, inside Iraq, what is the name of that organisation, who heads it, and what are they doing there? And let's move to Yemen. Which organization in Yemen, uh, which terrorist group in Yemen is Iran backing to try and take control and put Yemen under their sphere of influence? If you can't name me those organizations and the countries where Iran is operating, if before this incident you'd never even heard of Qasim Soleimani, if you still struggle to even remember his first name, then please do me a favor and don't make it all about you because you don't really know the Middle East. All you know is how much you hate President Trump. But if President Trump has just taken out the man that was responsible for supporting the murder of half a million Syrians, then forgive Arabs and Muslims for not giving a damn about how much you hate Trump and rather focusing on what matters, which is exactly what's going on in the Middle East. Now, you may well be concerned, and there are some legitimate concerns, and I want to go through them one by one, because as a liberal, we, you know, we, we, we should respect international norms, international law and justice. So is it right to assassinate somebody uh, by drone and, uh, and other such concerns? So I'll go through them one by one just to allay some of your concerns. Uh, first point, is this a violation of international law? That's a, that's a serious concern, legitimate concern. I had th that concern when Bush invaded Iraq and Blair. I still think that was illegal. And so, yes, it's a legitimate concern whether this was a violation of uh, international law. But consider this. Again, many Western leftists uh, from Hollywood wouldn't have even heard at this point. But last year, in roughly April, the United States designated the Iranian Revolutionary Guard which is the, uh, the faction of the military within the Iranian military that's responsible uh, for looking after uh, the interests of the Ayatollah and protecting him, the United States designated the Iranian Revolutionary Guard as a terror group, and that makes the head of the IRG a terrorist. Now, if you reluctantly accepted President Obama's strike against bin Laden, if you reluctantly uh, accepted Trump's recent strike against the leader of ISIS Baghdadi, then this isn't technically any different. So if you weren't saying those were violations of international law, then don't start saying it now. Now, there is a, there is a, uh, a difference uh, de facto, and that is that this man wasn't just a, a terrorist. He was also the top general in a state. That is a legitimate concern as well. And so even though he was a terrorist, isn't, isn't he more than that? If he was a, a, a general in a legitimate state army, uh, then, then, then isn't that an act of war to take out some, someone's general? 
And and again, I'll say to you in in uh, consideration to that concern, yes, that's correct. Um, it is uh, an act of war, uh, but Iran didn't declare war in return. And I also say to you, because Iran was already at war, not only with uh, the people of Syria and the people of Iraq, but actually with Western directly with Western interests through those terrorist proxy militia. So let me remind you. Iran was already at war when they seized the British tanker through the Strait of Hormuz with no justification and wouldn't release it until we released their tanker that was in Gibraltar that was in violation of EU sanctions on EU terrain because they were sending supplies again to Syria to back up Assad. That's why their tanker was seized in return for the US and EU sanctions that prohibit sending arms and weapons to back up Assad in Syria, they decide to kidnap a civilian tanker. They were already at war with us when they launched missiles at the Aramco facilities in Saudi Arabia and blew up the world's largest oil exporter uh, factory, Aramco. They were already at war when they injured four US Marines and murdered a US civilian after launching strikes inside Iraq against a US base or a facility. They were already at war when via Kataib Hezbollah and the Hasht al-Shaabi militia in Iraq, they encouraged the ransacking again of the US embassy in Baghdad. That's an act of war. I mean, it's not as if Iran's been peaceful all this time. They were already at war. So in a theater of war, which is Iraq, taking out a man that's at war against your interests and is also happens to be designated as a terrorist, isn't too much different to Obama taking out bin Laden. Now, the other concern you may have is whether this was a violation of Iraqi sovereignty. Well, not really, considering that US troops in Iraq are there upon the invitation of the Iraqi government, just as the Iranian uh, uh, presence was as well. And so, in fact, if two warring factions are in a country at the in invitation of that government, then that country's become a theatre of war, which, no surprise, I mean, you've just had ISIS there ransack half of the north. And so, you know, it's not really those. These are legitimate concerns, but they don't really stand up to scrutiny. And ultimately, at the end of the day, once all the dust has settled, you can see what President Trump did he, is he smoked out Iran, ended the global conceit, this pretense that Iran wasn't backing uh, terrorist militia across uh, the world by basically holding the top general responsible for all these terrorist militia, accountable for his actions by taking him out. He was announcing to the world and to Iran that we will no longer keep pretending that you're not backing terrorist militia around the world. And from now on, any of your proxies that target US or our allies' interests, Iran directly, Tehran, will be held responsible. Let's say Hezbollah decides now to attack another US embassy somewhere. Iran now will be directly held responsible for that. The pretense that these are independent militia acting on their own is now once and for all and finally over. About blooming time. And you can see in Iran's response to what President Trump did that they were incredibly constrained. They could no longer act in a belligerent terroristic way, but rather they had to respond in what I call quote unquote conventional military means. Target a military base, which is what they did. Upshot was zero Iraqi casualties, zero American casualties. So where was World War Three? Michael Moore, Rose McGowan and all you other US Hollywood celebs who are oh such experts on the Middle East. Where was World War Three that you were predicting? Zero Iraqi casualties, zero American casualties. Iran had to respond conventionally. In other words, they had to once again stick to the rules. And that is the net positive of everything that just happened. My deepest, deepest condolences to everyone uh, and the families who lost their lives in the downed Ukrainian jet, which all indications are so far was uh, an Iranian missile by accident. My deepest condolences to them. That's on Iran uh, uh, because, of course, it would, it would be probably a, a, an accidental missile strike during those strikes on the US-Iraq airbase. But apart from that one incident, which was a, a tragedy... The, 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 this conflict itself was pretty neat, to be honest, in the sense that no civilian casualties in the uh, strike on the base in Iraq. Zero Iraqi casualties, zero American casualties. And now the world is all the wiser for Iran's sponsor of terrorist proxy militia across the world. Iran is now constrained 
it can no longer act with impunity through terrorist groups because the world will now hold Tehran responsible for it. So what may just have happened is a resetting of decades and decades of Qasem Soleimani getting away with murder, literally, because he was pretending that it wasn't him. And in the end, therefore, surely, surely, that sounds like a net positive. You're listening to... My 